In this video tutorial we're going to be looking at the phase diagram for plain steel and in particular we're going to be focusing in on what happens when body centre cubic steel turns to face centre cubic steel. And again this is information that we can obtain from our phase diagram. Before we look at that particular transformation let's look at a much larger phase diagram and whilst this looks more complex what we have is a lot of similarities to the previous phase diagram that we looked at which involved lead and tin alloys. So the first point on this diagram that I'd like to draw your attention to is this point here. And what we see at this point here is we see our liquid transforming directly into gamma plus Fe3C. Well gamma is our FCC steel and Fe3C is iron carbide and we'll talk about each of those a bit more now. On the far left hand side we see a region marked gamma austenite and gamma austenite as I just mentioned there is our FCC structure of steel. In addition we have Fe3C which is iron carbide but iron carbide is also referred to as cementite. Now this point here where we go directly from liquid to a layered solid is called our eutectic composition and we've seen this previously. So here we have our eutectic composition. Therefore when steel has a composition of 4.3% carbon we have our eutectic composition. At carbon contents of around 4.3% what we're really referring to is our cast ions. Now the other point of interest is at much lower carbon contents and the point of interest is this point here. Now what we notice happening at this point is we have gamma austenite, the face centre cubic steel, transferring directly into alpha steel and Fe3C, cementite or iron carbide. Well, alpha steel or alpha iron is actually our body centre cubic structure and we see a very narrow band here for that particular structure, BCC. Now the name of BCC iron or steel is called ferrite. So really alpha is primarily iron but with a small amount of carbon included. Now the important thing about this point is it's not a eutectic point because we're not going from liquid to solid. In fact, it's called eutectoid. Now the big difference here is that U means easy, tectic means melt, so at our eutectic point we have the easy melt point or the melting at the lowest temperature. Eutectoid means easy melt like. We're going from face centre cubic iron or steel into body centre cubic. And as we saw in an earlier video, this isn't a change in state, it's a change in solid structure. The last thing to point out before we focus in on this eutectoid point is that cementite is actually a ceramic. It's a very hard, very brittle material. So in effect, we have soft iron combining with very hard cementite. So now let's focus in on our eutectoid point. Okay, so we've already mentioned that austenite or gamma steel is face centre cubic. And we've also mentioned that ferrite or alpha iron is body centre cubic. Now we have this very narrow band on the left hand side which represents ferrite with a small amount of iron carbide dissolved or Fe3C. That Fe3C is also known as cementite. So on the left hand side we have BCC iron with a small amount of cementite dissolved. Now in terms of our other regions we have alpha plus gamma which is a mixture of alpha iron BCC and gamma austenite FCC. We also have a region which is cementite Fe3C plus 
gamma. And at the bottom, we have our region, which is alpha plus cementite. This laminated mixture of alpha and iron carbide is also known as perlite. And alpha plus cementite will extend to both sides of our eutectoid point. So the first thing to discuss is what happens at our eutectoid point. Well, at our eutectoid point, we're going to go directly from austenite, FCC, into our laminar layers of alpha plus iron carbide, or ferrite plus cementite. So I'll sketch it up here at the top. At that eutectoid point, we're going to go directly into our layered structure. And those layers will be alpha, ferrite, and cementite, Fe3C. So we have perlite with alternating layers of alpha and the ceramic material iron carbide. So very similar to our eutectic point where we went directly from liquid to solid, here we're going directly from gamma FCC into alpha BCC plus cementite. Now the important things to point out there is that the percentage of carbon is 0.77%. And the transformation is occurring at 727 degrees C. So the lowest temperature that FCC will go to BCC or BCC will go to FCC is 727 degrees. Let's pick another point. This time, let's assume that we have 0.4% carbon steel at a temperature of 850 degrees C. Well, we can see from our diagram there that that's going to be austenite, FCC. But if we begin to cool that, and let's cool that to a temperature of 730 degrees C, so we're into this region, then we know that we're going to have alpha ferrite plus gamma. So very similar to what we saw in previous videos, we're going to get sections of alpha, which is our BCC material. like so. Now the remaining material is going to be austenite, which is FCC, and that's our gamma steel. So ferrite will continue separating out until we reach our eutectoid composition. So we're no longer going to have any FCC austenite. Instead what we'll have on our diagram is a laminar structure. And again, we'll have alternating layers of BCC iron, alpha, and iron carbide. If we look at our third possibility, and for this example, we will have a carbon content of 1.4%. So here, and we've got a temperature of around 1000 degrees. There we have pure austenite, FCC. When we cool that, below a given temperature, so let's say we call to 850 degrees C, we now have cementite, Fe3C, and gamma. Well this time, the material that's separating out is actually our cementite, our iron carbide. So we end up with something like this, Fe3C, separating out, and the remaining material gamma. Now when we continue to cool, the material surrounding the cementite is going to be at 0.77% carbon, and what we'll see happening is the layers forming once again. So once again, layers of ferrite or alpha iron and iron carbide. So what impact does all of this have on the properties of steel? Well, we've already said that iron in its pure form is relatively soft, malleable and ductile. And we've said that cementite or iron carbide is very hard and very brittle. It's essentially a ceramic material. So what we would expect is as the amount of cementite increases, we would expect the material to become harder, stronger and potentially more brittle. 
Now let's take a look at another diagram to see if that's the case. So on this diagram we see our weight percentage carbon on the x-axis and we see various other different properties plotted on the y-axis. So the first one that we notice is impact energy. Now recall that impact energy tells us about how tough a material is. And if a material isn't tough, then it is brittle. Toughness and brittleness are the inverses of each other. Now what we see happening here is as our percentage carbon increases, we see the amount of impact energy it can absorb decreasing. So as the percentage carbon increases, brittleness also increases. Now as brittleness increases, the other thing that will increase is hardness. So higher carbon contents lead to a much harder material. Now the other thing that's on here that we see increasing is our tensile strength. So as we increase the carbon content, we increase the tensile strength. It's much harder to disrupt the layers in the material because they're interlocked by these cementite layers. We've already seen that ceramics have very high tensile strength, so this is in line with what we would expect. Now the last line that's on there that's worth mentioning is percentage elongation. And percentage elongation really refers to how ductile a material is. Materials that aren't ductile are also not malleable. So here we see, as the carbon content increases, the material becomes less malleable and less ductile. So all of these things are in keeping with what we would expect when we increase the amount of ceramic within a relatively soft, malleable metal.